Well, welcome on behalf of Prep 45, Min USA Wrestling. Thank you for joining us for the initial broadcast of Takedown of the Week. I'm here today with Mr. Hall. First name? Tom Hall. Tom Hall, sorry. I get those moments, uh, senior moments. Uh, we're going to be announcing the matches. They're going to be starting shortly. We're running a little bit behind right now, Tom, because we've got uh, we've got some JV action that needs to be cleared up before we get started. Uh, so we're going to just kind of uh, uh, bring everybody up to speed on what we're going to do today. Who do we have wrestling in the 106-pound bracket for us, Tom? Well, 106 pounds is going to feature Tucker Peterson from Brainerd versus Joey Thompson of Maple Grove. Um, both young guys, ninth grader versus 8th uh, grader. Um, don't know much about either boy. I did watch Tucker Peterson wrestle in his first match. Uh, pretty dangerous. He was down, I believe, around uh, 7 to 2 and uh, pulled a nice cement mixer for the fall. So a nice, uh, nice uh, way to get into the semifinals. Well, that's always fun when you get something like that. The 106-pound class is always one of those mystery classes when yep. you start the year because you really don't know a lot about who's going to be at 106 pounds. That, that's a uh, pretty light weight for high school age kids usually. Yep, absolutely. And uh, one thing to mention about Joey Thompson is he did uh, defeat uh, Francis Fuenfinger to get into the semis, which uh, anybody who follows Minnesota wrestling definitely knows the Fuenfinger name. And uh, so that would have to be a quality win for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. And we will let everybody know this. We are at the Mound West Tonka Turkey Burn. Uh, we will be broadcasting uh, as best we can when we get up and running. We are still doing JV matches. So if you see it, we're not calling the match. We're just kind of bringing you up to speed. The Turkey Burn is an individual tournament. I like starting the year as an individual tournament. It gives the good wrestlers a chance to meet good wrestlers. And the guys that are kind of getting their feet wet, they find their level of competition too. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. As a coach, you always want to start the season as individual tournaments. And uh, you get all your wrestlers who go out on the mat, especially a case like this where you've got both JV and varsity wrestlers competing. And uh, so it's, it's always good just to kind of break that rust off. So. Yeah, Brainerd even had two kids that were 106 pounds that they're good varsity quality wrestlers. So they let them have two kids in this tournament. I think that's awesome when you can have that happen. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that, Dan. Okay, then how about at 113? What are we expecting at 113, Tom? Well, 113, we got a Dynamo and Aaron Cashman from Mount West Tonka. He was 36 and 3 last year, took fourth in the state tournament for AAA. He's currently ranked number one in the Class 3A guillotine rankings for the state of Minnesota. And uh, definitely a solid performer. He's going to take on Reed Lord Lawrence from Matamitai. Uh, older brother also will be calling a match for him later on. Lawrence is a tough kid. Uh, he's going to have a, uh, a little bit of a tiger on his hands, but I'm sure he'll come out competing. So that one should be a good one. Those are always fun as well. Yeah, uh, young Mr. Cashman had a great offseason. He's uh, recognized nationally for some of, the, some of the events he's in. He's even... You know, in some of the rankings, you'll see Intermat or Flow Wrestling or uh, uh, Win Magazine. You know, they put out rankings, and and uh, young Mr. Cashman's no, making okay. a name for himself. Yeah, absolutely. You should also mention that uh, Sarah, uh, Aaron Cashman's father, Ron Cashman, and I wrestled together as youth coming up. So I know the Cashman family pretty well, and we wrestled in a lot of these tournaments just like this when we were kids, and, and even younger than that. So I definitely. Uh, shows that how much of a family sport wrestling really is and a lot of these kids will be calling matches for here you'll recognize the family name you know we got a pat note coming up later on and cashman we got some halls thrown in there and wilson's you know, wilson's exactly you know, so it's uh makes it fun all right let's move up to 120 pounds I should also announce the teams that are participating today the host team obviously the Mount West Tonka White Hawks <clears throat> They're coached by, uh, excuse me, I got a couple things going on here at once. Yep. They're coached by Todd Munster Tiger. Uh, the White Hawks uh, are kind of an up and coming young team. I think they've got a lot of numbers. Um, St. Francis is here with John Lorenzen. His first year as head coach, he takes over for Mike Phillips. <clears throat> excuse me. St. Cloud Tech has co head coaches Mike Bueller or Beeler. 
and Chad Emery. Hibbing has Elijah Wojciechowski. He's been around up there in the Hibbing area about five years. He took over for the legend, Mr. Johnson, up there in Hibbing, yep, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Brainerd, Mike Baran and Jim Kath. Manamida, Joe Leaf is the head coach. And Maple Grove is coached by Tony Siebert. So I so wanted to make sure we get the coaches recognized while we had a break. So, yep. so we're going to get you 120 now. 120, we got again another Brainerd young man here, Kyle Patnode from Brainerd. Uh, he won his semi or his quarterfinal match eight to six over Lo Logan Lustilla. And then we got Gavin Peterson from Maple Grove who defeated Zach Bonte from St. Francis nine to six to get into the semifinals. Uh, a couple of young kids, we got a 10th grader versus an eighth grader. So, okay. All right. a couple up and comers. Yeah, and down the other bracket, I recognize Cole Hubish. Cubish is one of the other one of the other uh, wrestlers to watch. So yeah, he's um, ranked uh, really, number seven in the AAA guillotine rankings. So okay, all right, let's move up to uh, next weight. 100, <laughs> excuse me, 126 pounds. Okay, at 126, we got Alex Kern from Tech. He had a bye in the first round. He's going to be taking on Brad Powell from Hibbing who uh, beat uh, Colin Grandstand of Matamidi 6-2 to to get to the semis. Uh, Alex Kern was a state qualifier last year for St. Cloud Tech. He didn't place, but, you know, so that's how he earns the number one seed. A state qualifier is a pretty important deal in a tournament like this. Yep. Good, solid wrestler. Okay. Next weight class at 132 pounds. We got A.J. Bethea from Hibbing. He's ranked number seven in the Class 2A guillotine rankings right now. Uh, he won by injury default in the first round. He's going to be taking on Mitchell Wilson, who uh, wrestled uh, one of the Smaltz boys from Mount West Tonka, Ben Schmaltz, uh, in the quarterfinals to get in the final. He uh, sewed up a really nice power half to win that match by the fall. Uh, both Bethea and Wilson are both hard-nosed kids. I expect to see a good, tough match between those two. All right, let's move up to 138. This could be uh, a weight class where you're going to see a couple of really good wrestlers coming out of this one potentially, right? Yes, absolutely. You've got uh, Morgan Fuenfinger from Hibbing, uh, number six rated in the class 2A rankings by the guillotine. Uh, he's going to be taking on Max Boron from Brainerd, who uh, got into the semifinals here via uh, bye. And then uh, Neil Smaltz returning back from injury after a year and a half out. Glad to see him back. Uh, he has the number two seed. He won by major decision, 14 to four. He's going to be taking on Nistler on the bottom side again from Tech. Both solid kids, so uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Nistler had almost 20 wins last year in his varsity season. So yeah, you're right. Quality, quality wrestlers at 138 pounds. At 145. 145 actually has three ranked kids in the semifinals. You've got, uh, we're going to be calling Andy Schlazer, who's the number one seed here. He's number four in the Class 3A guillotine rankings from Brainerd. Uh, he won via fall in 22 seconds in his first match. Uh, he's taking on Luke Dorn from Tech. Luke had a solid 31-8 and eight season last year. Really solid. He won by major decision to get into the semis. And then on the bottom side, you've got uh, number eight in the state ranked Mason Hall from St. Francis. Is that somebody you know by chance? Yeah, I might know that kid a little bit, yeah. <laughs> That's bad there, folks. We're just having a little fun, but Tom's his father, so. Yeah. So he, Mason, has, he's a fine young wrestler. Thank you. Yeah. yeah he's been working hard. Uh, finalist at Fargo this past summer was probably uh, – his biggest accolade, although he's pretty proud of going undefeated at most the uh, cadet national duels and the junior Olympic national duels to make both All-America teams. I was pretty excited about that also. That makes mom and dad proud too, and that's awesome. Yep. You know, people say you see quality kids come from quality stock, and I think you can see that in this case. So <laughs> congratulations. He's man. taking on uh, Lee Schmalls, another one of the Schmalls kids from, from Mount West Hockey here. Exactly. Now, Lee is... Uh, He's currently ranked uh, sixth at 138 pounds in the uh, guillotine rankings. Um, and, yeah, you're right, another one of those quality kids that he was in the state tournament last year, he qualifier, but he didn't place at 126 pounds. Yep. We okay. have that listed as one of our signature matchups yeah. of the tournament as well. So that's going to be a fun one to watch, just so everybody knows I'm probably going to have to walk away from the mic for that one. <laughs> well, fortunately, that will be on the other mat, so <laughs> exactly. we, we won't have to. 
you'll have to watch it, but you won't be calling it. So yeah. I'll, I'll be able to handle Slesher and Dorn on my own on that one. Okay, at 152 good, pounds. All right, 152 pounds. We got Ryan Reed again from Mount West Taka. He's ranked number five in the Class 3A rankings by the guillotine right now. Really solid, long kid. He was 35 and nine last year. He won by fall in the in the quarterfinals to get in the semis here. He's taking on Hunter Hall from Matamidi. Uh, tough young scrapper. Looks like he's a ninth grader. Uh, won eight to two over another ninth grader. Uh, Cole Veracek from Hibbing to get into the to the semifinals here. So. Now, Ryan Reed came down and he wrestled at the JJ Classic this year. It's one of those preseason tournaments. A lot of the Mound West Tonka kids came down, so that was kind of a good preseason warm-up for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage any kid that, you know, obviously this year started, but next year kind of keep that in mind, a chance to get your feet wet a little bit, um, figure out where your conditioning is before yeah. the season starts. <laughs> Yeah, that's always a good idea. Absolutely. Then on the bottom side on that bracket, we got uh, Dylan Smirillo from uh, Mount West Tonka is going to be taking on uh, Luke Lipinski from St. Francis. Uh, Luke's a tough 10th grader. He won by fall to get into the semifinals. Uh, Dylan is an 11th grader. Uh, he won 6-2 to two over uh, Jack Burnt, who's a pretty solid kid as well, to get into the semis. So some real nice matches there on yep, that bracket. Yep, that'll be a fun one to watch. At 160 pounds, moving up to a little bit of the bigger guys. Here's one of the better wrestlers in the state of Minnesota. Uh, Devin Fitzpatrick from Montemite was a runner-up last year to, to uh, Brady Berge down there in Cass Manorville. But that was not a cakewalk. Devin yeah. Fitzpatrick is a quality wrestler. I like the way this kid wrestles. He's hard-nosed. He's aggressive. He's technical. I mean, he's got a lot of the qualities that college coaches are probably salivating over uh, and is this is this his senior year yeah he's yep, a senior, yeah, senior yep. year this year so I'm sure Mr. Fitzpatrick would like to uh, go out on top this year if at all possible Absolutely. Uh, he's taking on Luke Bonte from St. Francis I don't know a whole lot about Luke he's a ninth grader ninth grader so one of the young St. Francis is a young squad this year absolutely yeah. very young yep. <laughs> They graduated a lot of the Wilson twins, twins right? That they graduated from there and, and a few more seniors. Uh, but I think they've got their program on the upswing in Section 7 AAA. So they're Absolutely. still in Section 7 yep. after all the shuffling. Yep, they yeah. are. And, uh, yeah, they're gonna, we should have a fairly strong team for St. Francis coming out of the pipe at the end of the year. We have five starters we couldn't bring today for got some injuries and things like that going on. But, uh should be a fun season. All right. Yep. Oh, on the bottom side, we should also mention uh, Logan Dick from Maple Grove. Uh, been a lot around a long time. Yeah. Like you guys know he's not currently ranked, but uh, definitely a really strong competitor, and uh, he's wrestling up a couple weights right now. So. We we have Logan ranked number four at oh, number Triple four. A at okay. hundred uh, at uh, at a different weight here at one hundred fifty two. Yep. Last year he was a state qualifier, 145, so you're right, quality wrestler. Yep. Um, been around for quite a while. It's his senior year as well. So. Yep, he's taking on a senior in Noah Bowers, Byers from Mount West Taka. Okay. 170, uh, we've got uh, Evan Lawrence versus C.J. Wool. Evan is from Matamidi, a uh, long scrapper. Uh, he's got a pretty good low shot and a good leg rider. He's going to be taking on C.J. Wool from Brainerd. Uh, tough senior. I don't know much about him, but uh, this is a smaller weight class, so we haven't had a chance to see them wrestle in the, in the uh, quarterfinal rounds. Yeah, we'll see what kind of rust they have, knock her off that semifinal match, and kick this year off with some fun. Yep, exactly. On the bottom side of that bracket is Bobby Coleman from Mount West Tonka taking on Cole Kerpak from St. Francis. Uh, so that should be a fun matchup. Right. Her back name is one you guys might have heard of a little bit. Yep. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so just to remind folks, we are waiting while they're finishing some of the junior varsity matches. So we're just kind of going to bring you up to date on what we're going to see here in the semifinals. Uh, Tom Hall from St. Francis and myself, Zimbrota Dan, we're going to be announcing these matches, but well, letting you know what to expect. At 182 pounds, what do we have coming up, Tom? Uh, we've got Cole Shredder from Tech, really tough kid. He's ranked number three currently in the Class 3A guillotine rankings. Uh, you said to mention the word uh, hard-nosed earlier. I think that epitomizes uh, Cole Shredder for sure, epitomizes, I should say. 
He's taking on Morgan Gibson from Brainerd. Uh, Shredder had a bye to get into the semifinals. Uh, Morgan Gibson uh, beat Ben Nelson from Matamidi 6-3 to, to get to the semifinals. So. On the bottom side, we got Zach Newman of Hibbing going against Timmy Wettenkamp from St. Francis. Uh, we got a ninth grader versus an 11th grader. Um, should be a fun matchup. I've watched, I can say about Timmy, I've watched him wrestle since he was a little shaver. Good hard-nosed kid. And uh, the Hibbing boy, I saw him wrestle a little bit in his first match. Definitely tough and very strong. So it should be a good matchup. Yeah, he got, uh, he wrestled 22 varsity matches last year as a 10th. Or as a ninth grade, or a, excuse me, eighth grader. Yeah, right? go back to my facts here. Yes, as an eighth grader. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of matches up at that weight class for an eighth grader. So, yep. so yeah, he, he's got some varsity experience. Yep, number three seed coming in too, so he's respected. Yep. So when we move up to 195 pounds, we're getting up to some of the bigger boys. Some of these guys are coming off football, so we haven't got a full bracket here. Yep. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll fill this bracket out. But uh, who do we expect to see today at 195 pounds? Well, the number one seed uh, will be calling Tyler Hug from St. Cloud Tech. Uh, they got a lot of big, tough kids from St. Cloud Tech. I'll tell you that much. He was 32-7 and seven last year. He's currently ranked number three in the Class 3A guillotine rankings. Um, and he's going to be taking on Isaac Bomer from Maple Grove. Should be a good, tough match. I think Hug will be fun to watch. Yeah, he, he's one of those kids that... Uh, you're right, he's explosive when he's out on the mat watching them. Yep. Uh, Logan Theodore on the bottom side for Brainerd. I've been watching him wrestle at the MNUSA State Tournament uh, for years and years. He's just been around a long time. Real tough kid. And Devontae Jelly that he's taken on from Hibbing. Uh, real tall kid. So that'll make Logan's not as tall. So it makes for an interesting matchup that way. Okay. Now we're getting up to 220 pounds. Some people don't like this weight class. I think it's a great weight class for the athletes that don't want to wrestle heavyweight, but they don't want to cut weight down to 195 pounds. Yep. That's just my personal feeling, so you guys can do what you want with personal feelings. Everybody has them. Yeah, exactly, Dan. And we got a full eight-man bracket at 220. Nice. So obviously, or seven out of eight anyway. On our side, we're going to have Micah Mangel of Tech, another big kid again, number one seed, taking on Adam Skogman from Maple Grove. And the bottom side, Joe Duffy, Joe Duffy of Mount West Tonka is taking on Holden Law of it. All right. I wonder if that Duffy's related to the, the uh, Duffy's I saw in the state tournament last year. It's a possibility. Could very well possibly be. I mean, you've got a couple of Duffy's that actually were in the state tournament. Uh, South St. Paul, Paul has, yeah. uh, 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 what's his first name? Dad's name is Mark. Uh, he also just received uh, several accolades for the football season as nice. well. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, very tough kid. So, All right. And then uh, the big boys. I always love heavyweight matches. This year uh, we've got uh, Halen springing from Hibbing. Uh, as a sophomore, he wrestled only uh, 13 matches on varsity. But this year he got the number one seed because he probably has the most experience of anybody coming into the tournament. Uh, a lot of times, these tournaments, uh, you will find some younger guys at heavyweight. Yep. Uh, Tyler, or H Halen, excuse me, happens to be a junior, and he's taking on Jeff Bowling from Hibbing. Uh, Hibbing, actually, that's a, that's a, a wrestle-off, so to speak, because uh, uh, teammates in the semifinal bracket, that'll be fun to okay. watch. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And down in the other semifinal bracket, you'll have Tommy is that Firminger yep. from Monomida, and he's taking on Taylor Tilson. Tyson, uh, I know Tyler had a, a good year last year. He made the state tournament as a state qualifier at 220 pounds, so, hmm. so he moved up this uh, maybe early in the season just to get some work in yep. in the heavyweight division. He maybe cut down. We'll see what kind of shape he's in. He got the number two seed, so... So that uh, kind of rounds out what we're going to have for the for the uh, individual matchups. Uh, they'll be starting, you know, fairly shortly. When we do, we'll make sure we get everybody up to speed on what we have. Yeah, we're letting them know. Yeah.
Yep, so you're watching JV at home while they're they're finishing the JV brackets. Uh, it's just one of the fun things you have to do. These young kids, they work hard in the practice room too, so I love it when they get a chance to wrestle in front of a little bigger crowd. The tournament usually brings moms and dads and grandpas and grandpas, so you can, you can get a few more people in the stands. A lot of these kids, you may see by the end of the year, will be wrestling a varsity, so... Uh, there's Absolutely. nothing wrong with them getting mat time here. Absolutely. Again, I'm going to just kind of make sure everybody knows that this is prep prep 45 takedown of the week. We are at Mound West Honka High School, home of the White Hawks, and we're doing this in, in uh, we're doing this in association today with the Minnesota USA Wrestling. Uh, thanks for all the work they're doing to broadcasting this. It's going out on prep45.com. Uh, people from around the country can be watching it. So if they're, you know, grandpa and grandma are wintering down in Arizona, they may be able to see their kids wrestle. Uh, or maybe uh, somebody's at home and they just didn't get to make the turn, uh, trip down. Uh, we will be starting shortly. We're just doing a few uh, junior varsity matches. It looks like we're getting to the upper weights there, so we should be getting close to starting our action soon. Absolutely. Maybe we should just run down and recognize the uh, the officials we have working today. All right. They're going to do a round robin kind of thing. They have five officials refereeing today. Uh, Rod Frost is your head official. Uh, Rod's been around the wrestling arena for a long time. His son's wrestling, I think, heavyweight this year down the Farmington Farmington program, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, so. Uh, he has to re recluse himself from those matches when they come to get on the mat because he gets wound up on those just like any dad will on his yeah. matches. Um, right in front of us, uh, currently we've got, uh, that's Nate Lefebvre. He's one of the younger referees. I love seeing younger referees because they're, they're going to have to take uh, call the action for many years to come. Uh, Nate's been around the wrestling arena for a, a long time and people recognize the name. Uh, he does a really nice job calming influence on the mat from what I've seen. Uh, some experience in Gary Forcier. Uh, he's been uh, up in this uh, area, the neck of the woods, roughing for a long time. Uh, so Gary will be on the mat for us. Craig Sanders, I've seen Craig at the state tournament. You know, he works a lot of different matches. Uh, he'll be roughing, yep, today, as will John Harris. Uh, so those will be your officials today. Again, while you run down the head coaches for everybody on the that'll be coaching today for us, Tom, real quick. All right, head coaches. So for Mount Wenstaka, we've got Todd Munster Tiger, um, St. Francis, the new coach John Lorenzen. I think Todd's been around a while with Mount Wenstaka. St. Cloud Tech, we've got co-head coaches actually, uh, Mike Betchler and Chad Emery, uh, Hibbing. We've got Ellis Wojciechowski. Brainerd head coaches again, co-head coaches, Mike Boran and Jim Kapp. Monomedi head coach, Joe Leaf. And Maple Grove head coach, Troy Siebert. So, and we'll be uh, trying to, you know, these head coaches put in a lot of time with these wrestlers and uh, bringing up these young men, both at the JV and off in the ninth grade level as well as varsity. So we're going to give them some recognition throughout the course of the broadcast here to just to... Uh, Give them props for all the hard work they do to develop the kids. So. Yep, exactly. Hey, Tom, the Montemedi Zephyrs are one of those teams that's constantly in football. I mean, they're a powerhouse, right? Absolutely. So they may be a little short-handed today while they're getting kids back into wrestling shape. Um, but uh, I think it's one of those things you'll see powerhouses develop. Wrestling coaches love football players. Football coaches love wrestlers so we need to work hand in hand with them and recognize when we have good quality programs uh kind of hats off to everybody on those those uh institutions as well absolutely yeah there really are complementary sports to one another uh the athleticism balance body positioning uh that you learn in wrestling just translates so well to all football positions really but you know when you look at uh Heavy tackling positions, linebackers, tailbacks, or I mean uh, cornerbacks, and then any inside line play where you're really looking at that internal hand fighting, uh, the wrestling skills are going to be so important. So even if the big guys can get 
couple of years in the wrestling room, it's definitely going to help their football career immensely. Yeah, the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, uh, Zimmer, he was uh, he was uh, uh, all American or a uh, at least a high school state champion down there in Illinois, and I think he made all American uh, or recognition for that. He appreciates high school wrestling too, which is kind of nice to know that you know Coach Zimmer knows uh, the importance of of wrestling and the coalition coalition to to football. He he intentionally recruits his linemen, his linebackers. He said, if I can get a, a football player that has that wrestling background at well, I know they know leveraging and position in footwork. That you can't sometimes teach a guy if they didn't get out on the wrestling mat. So, exactly. So the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, that's a pretty good endorsement. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> Doesn't get much higher than that, Dan. <laughs> Still wrapping up a few junior varsity matches here. As soon as we're done, we're going to kick off. Uh, so we're just kind of filling a little bit of time. We should thank Dave Peterson from Men USA Wrestling for coming down here, setting this stuff up. You'll see his pictures all over the internet later today. Uh, it's just a great supporter of the, the sport of wrestling in Minnesota. Having people like Tom Hall come down and, and lend their voice to this. Jake Deechler's on the other match calling it. Yeah, there's a kid that was an Olympian. Yep. And what does he do? He comes out and supports Minnesota high school wrestling. That's just fantastic for the sport. And he's calling the matches with uh, Doug Schmalz. Called Papa, a few uh, small boys that wrestle at the Mount West Hockey Program. Exactly. Yeah, for you guys out there in Cyberland, if you're not following Minnesota USA Wrestling via Twitter, via Instagram, via Facebook, uh, please jump out on all of those uh, internet opportunities to keep up on you know Minnesota wrestling at every level. You've got youth information and pictures out there all the way up to Olympic and our senior team. And, and uh, right now our senior team is actually in the finals of the UWW Grand B free competition in Baku, Azerbaijan. And uh, well, you had to say that one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just competing from around the world. The Minnesota Storm program, which is fully funded or pretty much funded by MNUSA Wrestling, gives our kids an opportunity to continue their careers beyond high school, beyond college. And uh, that's very, very important, you know, getting our, keeping our athletes funded, keeping our programs funded is one of the most important work we do so that uh, their dreams can come true. Yeah, you know, you look at the, these other wrestling powerhouses internationally, they are fully funded by the governments that they represent. Right. We, on the other hand, have to do everything independently here in the United States. And you're right, uh, Min USA does a wonderful job of promoting and getting the sport out there, raising funds so that guys can travel and compete. Uh, I don't know how Dave does it. He's got a full-time job, and then he does all this stuff as, as uh, volunteers. He's crazy. I tell you, Dave Peterson, you can't give him enough credit. He works tirelessly in the support of Minnesota Wrestling, and he truly is the heartbeat of social media outreach for for Minnesota wrestling in general and certainly Minnesota USA wrestling. So big props to Dave Peterson on that. You guys, Dave's not going to give you more money just for saying that. About <laughs> the voice you just heard in the background is Mr. Lance Hughes. Lance is kind of uh, also uh, spearheading this effort. He's worked diligently with the guys at Prep 45 to make this a week-long series, yep. or a weekly series, where we're going to highlight 11 matches uh during the season, you know, wrestling is a long season, and sometimes you can feel like uh, somebody's having a seizure. Okay. So we have uh, we have an eleven week uh, highlighted program coming up for us that uh, that we want to we want to make sure that we highlight. So we got a little something going on in the audience. We're going to just take a little break while things going on in the audience. I just turned it off temporarily. Just to get it. Kind of a, we don't ever want to do this again. Uh, turn the cameras on while people at home have to watch JV matches. We're not going to start it until all the wrestling before the semifinals or whatever round is done. You guys can start talking. But just have that stuff behind you. Put we'll the camera on the white box or. This is going to be driving people crazy. Who's out there? What are they right. doing? 
But I'm reminding them this is just JV. So. Yes, you see that roster. It doesn't make any sense to you. It's, weird. it's like you're almost disrespectful. You're right. Red Dark versus Evan Paul. Like the is a big fella. When we call a flower in the corner, kneeling down. He was a heavyweight for North Dakota State. They just put out lunch in the. Oh, what is that? They had biscuits and gravy. And now you tell me. So remind me when it blinks. Yep. Then we're live, right? No, it's not live right now. Okay. Not then. We we'll test it out. Test, test, test. Should be music back there. Can you hear anything? Yeah. Test. Go test. Back. Test. Hey, Lance, can you hear me now? I'm on, I'm on the other mat. You're on the other mat. Okay. How many matches we got left? So we're we're bringing the information to you live from Mount West Tonka High School. We're currently in the middle of JV matches, Junior Varsity. They will be uh, W Wrestling Junior Varsity. The varsity will be starting shortly. It's just one of the things that happens when you have a tournament. You got to get these young guys uh, mat time, mat experience. As uh, soon as the varsity goes live, then we'll know who's out there. We'll be able to call the action for you.
Again, ladies and gentlemen, just kind of to bring you up to speed, uh, this is Zimbrota Dan Hayes here, and I'm uh, talking with uh, Tom Hall from St. Francis. We are uh, a little bit of a delay while we can conclude the JV round, so we will have a little deviation from the norm. We've got a couple matches they want to give a little bit of uh, break on time-wise, so Instead of starting at the normal 106 pounds, looks like we're going to have a 126 pound match and a heavyweight match. And then are they jumping right back into the 106 after that? Do you know, Lance? Correct, yep. Yep, okay, so we'll, well, a little deviation, but hey, you know what? That's part of the fun of an invitational tournament. You can kind of do what you want. <laughs> yeah, it'll all work out. So a reminder that on behalf of Prep 45 and Min USA Broadcasting, we will be, thank you for joining us for the initial broadcast of the Takedown of the Week. We will be starting shortly, so if you're at home wondering what's going on, uh, just a uh, conclusion of this last uh, junior varsity match. I wish I knew the young fellas' names. I'd give them credit, but I don't know who's out there. Uh, but when we get to the varsity, we've got all their names. Yeah, do what you need to, Dave. Well, after this match, we're going live, so. Oh, okay. Okay, so after this match, there'll be a 15-minute break. So we're going to switch over to some music for you while you're waiting. We will be back in 15 minutes, though. Thanks for joining us at the Mount West Tonka Turkey Burn. find out too. Yeah, I'm ready, you can go. I wonder what the team scores are. Could announce that too, I yeah, suppose. Maybe before the